does that suggest, next it says, does the data suggest that atoms exist? So, from this, if data is ending up in multiple proportions, does that suggest that atoms exist? Yes. 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 What's A and B? So I just made up elements A and B here. B is boron, there is no A, but we'll pretend boron. there are. Now I have to flip back. So now I have to come up with some formulas. So like I told the molecule people to do last time, I would assume the lowest number one has one A and one B, and I'll draw that. So this is just an A and a B. If the ratio is twice as much, that means I'm doubling the amount of A, so I think I might have two A's and a B. I'm sort of on the combination of 9 flipping ahead to 10. If the ratio is three times as much, I might have three A's and a B. And if it's four times as much, I might have four. And then the last, last step is to think about what might be the mass of the atom of element A. And what I'm assuming is if this mass is 1, then this mass must be 4.29 times as much. So when you have two of them, it would be 8.57 times as much. Three of them would be 12.86. Four would be 17.4. So here's what I'd like you to do. See if you can do the same with the next data set. If you were a, I'm not getting this still, I'd like a little extra help, that, I'm going to be sitting at the back table for now. Otherwise, you should feel free to work with people at the table, at the seats next to you. If you want a calculator, you can use your iPad or the ones in front of you. But we're going to try to see how we can explain all of Dalton's data using his theory. So anyone who wants to ask questions, meet me back here so that I can, I'm going to work with a small group that would like that help. Well, you can't 
Zero six times two is? It's multiple. Why don't you try to find it? Dylan, you got a question about this one? Uh, yeah. It says that one point six is zero to the ratio. Yeah. Let's assume, we don't know. Let's assume it's one A and one B. So A, A, B. So that would be like. And it would also be the ratio, the mass of atom A, if B is 1, we can assume A is 1.6. 1. Okay, 1.6. 1. Then how many A's would you need to get? Exactly. So A to 3, A to 3, B. You got it. You guys. So, interesting, which is, I think sometimes when scientists are wrong, it's as interesting as when they're right. And Dalton, like you guys are doing, are, was able to figure out the mass ratio. So hydrogen was the smallest element he could find. So he said, let's assume that H has a weight of 1. Then he had to figure out the mass of all the other elements, and he made an interesting assumption. When you combine hydrogen and oxygen to make water, the mass ratio is approximately 8 to 1. So he said the mass of oxygen is 8. And this stood for many years. Is anyone, knowing what we know in modern times, can anyone say why this is wrong? Water is 8 to 1. What? So water, the mass ratio of O over H is 8 over 1. So he has said water is 1 H and 1 O, and therefore oxygen weighs 8 times as much. Because water is heavier than this. Like, this doesn't weigh anything. No, and if I go still, get a water bottle, it weighs more. It's still the ratios. But there's a problem with the H. There's a problem with one of his assumptions. Again, he said, the easiest compound to make out of hydrogen and oxygen is water. Therefore, water must be 1H and 1O. Well, maybe there's more than one. It's H2O. It's H2O, yes. So he assumed that it was 1H and 1O, and therefore got this H1 ratio. What he did not realize is that there's actually two H's in there. So no, it's actually, it's, it would have to be 16 to 1. Right? So, so 16 over times 1 will produce that H1 ratio. So my point is, he wasn't always right. And that's why I'm asking you to take leaps of faith that like this is the simplest form, whatever the smallest number is the simplest one. That would give you too. But I think that what you're seeing is if you assume that matter makes atoms, is made of atoms, you can get these nice patterns that come out of it. Tomorrow, we're going to go back and see how Dalton was able to take each piece of his theory from his evidence. And then we're going to look at the guy who said, wait a second, maybe atoms actually have smaller parts. Indestructible doesn't seem so right to me. So um, I'm going to hold off on giving you the homework until tomorrow, uh, but because it's not due until Tuesday. And if you put your calculators away and put your packets away, it's time to go. Thank you,